For startups, I would say the band has closely been uh, 15 to 25 lakhs uh, as a base salary. Remote work, most companies which I am aware of are offering between 50,000 to 100,000 US dollars. You won some hackathons and then you got some opportunities. Uh, someone from NVIDIA had approached me uh, because I was like very active on hackathons back then. On one of my videos, someone commented ki, can we get a remote job in machine learning? I know someone who has a, a degree in Bachelor's of Computer Application BCA. Uh, and is currently working at Hugging Face Paris. Even most of my friends uh, who made it to remote jobs, so they would actually contribute continuously to the repositories uh, of those particular companies. And they ended up actually get, being hired by the engineers who were actually re uh, reviewing the PRs. So yeah, there are remote jobs. Right now, the problem is even if you have the skills, you are struggling to find opportunities in any field. So what should someone do to get their opportunity, their first opportunity in their third or fourth year? So I would say uh, as early as possible, uh, start becoming visible on uh, either LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, a lot of my friends have actually put out this, they are looking for jobs on Twitter and they have landed right. interviews like just via those tweets. Welcome back to the Sanskar Show. In this episode, I am talking to Ishan Datta, who is a self-taught machine learning engineer working at Adobe. Ishan has vast experience when it comes to the field of ML because he has already worked in the fields of generative AI, computer vision, and metaverse, that too with big companies like NVIDIA, Waves and Biases, and Adobe. In this episode, I asked him, how can we make money with machine learning? How can we learn ML from scratch? How can we get remote jobs in this field? How can we make open source contributions? Or to or, he even told me what is a good starting salary that someone can expect working in India as well as remotely. Most importantly, if you have skills, hai, knowledge, hai, but you are still struggling to find a high paying job in the field of ML, then you will get this video in this video. techniques milengi. So, without wasting any time, I am Sanskar and you are watching The Sanskar Show. Hey Ishan, finally we meet. How are you? Yeah, yeah man, I am doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Ishan. Ishan, bhai, the main aim of this podcast for me is that if someone is in the 12th standard, mein hai, first year, mein, second year, mein, they have just heard of ML and they have an idea that yes, this is what happens in ML. So after watching this video, they should be at a point that they can earn some money by it, either freelancing, get a job. So this, we're going to talk about it for the next half an hour or so. So first of all, my question is that what is the best way to explore this field? Like let's say I'm in school, I'm in first or second year of college. So I want to know ki, is ML for me? Can I do, go ahead with ML? So what is the best way to explore? To know if you have an interest or not in ML. So how I got interested in ML, uh, basically uh, I had done a good amount of uh, C++. I had CS in my plus two. So I had hmm. a good exposure to programming back then. And in my first year, I had spent a lot of time talking to different people from different fields in computer science. That what is that? What is it that they do? What is the kind of projects that they work on? Full-time people. And I got connected to them via LinkedIn and Twitter. So then I uh, came across someone uh, who was current at that point of time working in Amazon in machine learning. And uh, so she described uh, her day-to-day -day role and projects. And that was very, like, that was something at that point of time was not very well versed with machine learning. So that uh, was to me like magic. Okay, okay, this is possible. <laughs> like you can have some data and you are basically predicting uh, what is possible. So I got very intrigued by that. And that is how uh, I started. So the first thing that I would recommend like everyone is talk to at least five to 10 people uh, who are doing, uh, who have just started or are doing well in that particular field that you're interested in and try to understand that how their day-to-day -day life looks like and what they actually work upon. Okay. So mm -hmm. that I think gives a very important idea that are you really interested or not? It's like a movie. If I give you a very overall hint that this is how the movie right. is going to be, you can instantly say, okay, this is something which I will like. Let's go watch it. It's something of that sort. Achha, also, is there some sort of educational background jo hona if someone wants to explore ML or yeah, if anyone can do that? Not really, man. So I, I know someone who has a, a degree in Bachelor's of Computer Application BCA uh, and mm. is currently working at Hugging Face Paris. I, I have a okay. B.Tech degree in electronics uh, from a very normal college. And so I uh, backed one of the highest packages in my college. Off, that was on, off campus. Uh, so that has not, nothing actually to do with the degree. I was an electronics grad, not even in CS. So no one really asked me that, which right. branch are you from? I don't think that really matters. Uh, mm -hmm. If you are not like sitting, considering campus placement, some companies have this criteria that we will pick from these and these branches. Off campus, mostly people are concerned about what are the projects that you have done, 
if you have competed in some hackathons or uh, what is your skill level mostly hmm acha theek hai let's do one thing let's slow things a bit and let's say ki i have decided ki mere ko machine learning seekhni hai isme aage badhna hai so what should be my first step second step and how can i go about it so i would say uh, before diving into ml uh, have some basic programming knowledge theek hai so uh, if you already know some programming language i would say uh, python will be easy to pick up okay there's python and r but i would recommend python because it's much more easier to use than r uh, so pick that up do some basic uh, tutorials spend at least like i would say 5 to 10 hours Uh, of python programming uh, okay. going through some tutorial so that you have some basic idea you can implement things after that there are a bunch of uh, starter courses on kaggle okay those are free courses anyone can do that and they are like bite size courses go through them so kaggle courses basically have give you a very good idea of what all genres are there within machine learning there can be computer vision there can be nlp there can be tabular data there some bit of python and sql as well in that so that in those bits and pieces you will get an idea of okay these are the things that are there and then you can think of okay within this what is it that i want to explore more so if you are interested mm-hmm. in computer okay. vision that is machine learning with images uh, or videos so you can try finding some projects or tutorials around them so if you just uh, go to youtube and uh, type for a uh, beginner computer vision projects and all so you might get some of those apart from this what you can also try is get a hand of some basic algorithms okay don't uh, try to delve a lot deep into the math at the beginning Uh, try okay. to get an understanding and intuition. Intuition is extremely important in machine learning. If this works, why do you think that this works? Okay, that is very important. Get a basic intuition of the algorithms, and then try to do some projects based on them. So you can start with some courses, then you can go to a, a good idea and intuition of some algorithms. Try to apply that on your own. So these are the I think first two or three things. This is how I had progress. And approximately, is me. How much time do I need to give? Like learning Python, then Kaggle, and then projects. How much time should I give to this? I think beginner Kaggle. Uh, if you are going for beginner Python courses, um, fifteen to twenty hours is, uh, I would say, pretty much enough that you can implement things. If you have like some understanding of programming, how how languages mm-hmm. work and all, fifteen okay. to twenty hours at least to get started. There is a lot more to be covered, but at least to get started. For algorithms, uh, it depends on how much. depth you are going to uh, go but i would say at least if you again spend some 10 15 days kind of it so you can get a hold mm-hmm. of understanding of what the algorithms are how they work and after that uh, for if you have a good understanding of how to code in python and some of these uh, algorithms then coding them should not be that difficult for one or two algorithms at the beginning you might take a little more time but after mm-hmm. that it becomes easy i'm talking about very very beginner projects like nothing correct, intermediate nothing correct. advanced Correct. Okay, I read on your LinkedIn that you won some hackathons and then you got some yeah. opportunities, job opportunities. Right. So right. from learning to participating in hackathons, making projects, mm. how much time was there in between, and what was that oh. learning curve like of building projects on your own? So what had happened basically was uh, I think I was uh, at the beginning of my fourth semester. Mm. I'd taken two NPTEL courses. One was in Python. One was in NLP. I was studying through them. and i scored well in them but uh, i was looking for projects so i think for 6 months uh, i would have spent a lot of time i had done a number of courses available on coursera i think i would okay. i would have wrapped up everything that came in my way theek okay, so i had like multiple big like 300 400 page notebooks of uh, notes and all and that because i had a lot of time back then because it was covid because i was spending like mm-hmm. crazy 12 14 hours a day just just studying studying okay. studying so mm-hmm. after that i realized that i was trying to, when i was trying to pick up projects if i would go to any tutorial and on and even a number of books so the level was mostly for beginners right so i had hmm, crossed right. that threshold and i was looking for something uh, okay what after this how to improve this more that okay. is when someone suggested me that uh, you should try competing in hackathons because the problem statements are really good and you will be able to learn uh, through via more people because they are, again share their okay. solutions and all so that is when i started competing i think that this was 6 to 8 months after i had actually started uh, studying Hmm. and yeah then i actually got addicted to hackathons that i was competing every week every weekend like if there's a hackathon okay. i i was there so i was competing aggressively on machine hack there was analytics with there i th- then finally came to kaggle kaggle i won a silver medal over there and okay. yeah so i competed for about a year and this has very po- positive impact because i was also sharing whatever i was learning throughout the way on my linkedin as well so that is mm-hmm. where i realized okay, okay i like uh some content writing and sharing things with people so there there the audience also grew and uh, that helped me uh basically i landed two interns 
uh, one of them was in IIT Kanpur. That's the end of my third year. I had applied there, and one of them uh, was in NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, uh, someone from NVIDIA had approached me uh, because I was like very active on hackathons back then. So they needed someone uh, of that sort. So yeah, those two interns I had landed, and I did that simultaneously. So the <laughs> durations was the same. Uh, so I had to either pick one of them, but I discussed with both of them. They were fine if I would do it both of them. So in my third year, towards the end, I was doing like. classes of college as well as like two internships simultaneously it was crazy i i almost did not sleep in, in those three months i very clearly recall that and yeah after that uh, uh because i was still contributing and i was uh, doing good in kaggle notebooks as well so i i have always uh in, when it comes to sharing with people i have always loved sharing in the form of code uh so doing that uh, someone approached me from uh, weights and biases uh, that's a startup in uh, uh, sf usa and uh, they wanted me uh, to join them as a dev expert so what my basically role was to write kaggle notebooks uh, for these competitions that are happening and also integrate uh, parts of their uh, product into them so i started writing for them and i also started writing some uh, technical blogs like coding tutorials and all uh, and some of that some of that uh, if you just uh, search for ishan datta won't be on google so you should be able to find so yeah that uh, happened and uh, <laughs> it so happened that uh, someone from weights and biases actually referred me to my first job uh, that was in uh, gurgaon that was talking of so yeah so he was offered that he did not take that but he referred uh, me for that role because he had seen my work so you see like how things are connected <laughs> right <laughs> just quickly also what is a kaggle notebook for the beginners watching this video okay so kaggle what is kaggle basically kaggle is uh, one of the i would say the actually the biggest uh, machine learning hackathon platform on world Uh, to give you an estimate that there are competitions with prizes of like fifty thousand or hundred thousand dollars as well, uh, and uh, all of the top companies like uh, even like Nvidia and all have actually Kaggle teams uh, who are competing mm. over there. Okay. Uh, on Kaggle, there are four different uh, tiers. I would say the most important one is the competitions. So you anyone can come uh, come in and you can take part in competitions. Taking part is completely free. You can also uh, write notebooks based on those competitions. So let's say I entered a computer vision competition. and i know that okay this can be a good baseline model for that so i can just put right. down my code for and share it with everyone out there okay similarly if someone finds a good idea like let's say there is a good data augmentation that is working there is uh, some uh, issue with the data or there is some good external data set that is available so people share over right. there so there is also discussions forum for every competition that is there and there again there's the data sets part that that's a little separate but hmm. in terms of kaggle notebook Correct. you can write notebooks for basically you can think of it as solutions for competitions or there are also you can say exploratory data analysis notebooks which people write which go a little, lot of depth into the kind of data that is there and help more people understand the data for the competition correct okay to just quickly sum it up abhi tak humne ye baat kari hai ki to learn machine learning firstly you need to know python uske baad you can do some courses from kaggle and you can make some projects उसके yeah. बाद यू कैन पार्टिसिपेट इन हैकेथॉन्स एंड देन यू कैन आल्सो पोस्ट अबाउट द प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑन लिंक्डइन एंड ट्विटर फ्रॉम देयर यू कैन गेट अपॉर्चुनिटीज अबाउट इंटर्नशिप्स एंड जॉब्स करेक्ट श्योर एंड व्हेन इट कम्स टू पोस्टिंग अबाउट प्रोजेक्ट्स लाइक आई वुड रेकमेंड डोंट जस्ट पोस्ट अबाउट इट व्हेन इट्स लाइक कंप्लीटली डन यू कैन पोस्ट पार्ट्स ऑफ योर अपडेट्स एज़ वेल लाइक दैट आई एम वर्किंग ऑन दिस दिस इज व्हाट आई वाज एबल टू अचीव लाइक इट्स इट्स इन द फर्स्ट वीक और 10 डेज and this is what i am planning टू डू इन द नेक्स्ट 10 डेज एंड देन अगेन इन द नेक्स्ट 10 डेज यू कैन गिव एन अपडेट सो यू हैव टू लाइक कीप पीपल इन द जर्नी interesting interesting and also is linkedin a better option or twitter yeah fir everything is same i would say uh, it depends on the kind of audience you would want so at that okay. point of time i was more interested in linkedin uh, writing long form content so linkedin hmm. was uh, the go to platform for me but i okay. would say that uh, you should have a equally good profile at both places because the kind of people i would uh, are certainly different and especially mm, for remote uh, most of the people who have exactly. spoken to about remote jobs uh, have been on twitter most of them don't even have exactly. linkedin profiles right exactly. so those kind of people it's and i have generally found that it's easier to connect and network with people on twitter as compared to linkedin mm. i i used right. to like the interface of writing on linkedin so that was very convenient for me so i i would write every day so i did this exercise where i wrote uh, one post every day for like an entire year i did not schedule mm. or do anything there was sh- not scheduling not even available on linkedin as a feature back then but i did that like for about a year and that was like probably one of the best things that i had done on one of our videos someone commented ki mm. can we get a remote job in machine learning so wohi mera sawal aap se exact ki are there remote opportunities in machine learning as well from people in india 
Yeah, and I mean, uh, most of the people I know who are doing like very well, like let's say I, there's this friend of mine uh, named Sayak Paul. Uh, he is in Hugging Face currently. He's working there remotely. Mm. Uh, then there are a couple of people like who I know in Weights and Biases as well. There's uh, Ayush is there. Uh, there's Swamik Rakshit is there. So these are also my friends. They're also working in Weights and Biases uh, remotely from India. So yeah, mm. there are remote jobs. Uh, I also had uh, I have a friend called as Aniket Maurya. Uh, he was earlier mm. working uh, remotely for Lightning AI. Uh, now he has uh, shifted to London. So yeah, there, there are uh, opportunities, but I would say I, I know most of these people and they had like a really, really solid uh, open source profiles and country mm-hmm. and significant contributions to the projects uh, which they ended up joining. Correct. Abhi, aapne na apne friends ki baat kari, to mera mm-hmm. hai, ki mm-hmm. when you are learning machine learning as a beginner in 12th mm-hmm. standard, first year, second year, so how can you find a mentor and mm-hmm. a community in All machine right. learning space? So uh, in my case, uh, what had happened was uh, my mentor, I knew her uh, via some family. And mm-hmm. once I started competing in hackathons, so when you are doing good, you automatically actually get connected. More people try to reach out to you who are actually doing good. So I Correct. got joined in a community of about 15, 20 people uh, or a little more uh, who were actively competing in hackathons back there. So I joined them and like my interest grew. So uh, I would say try to find people uh, who you think are trying to achieve a similar goal. In my case, uh, it was hackathon. So I was trying to find people who are actually competing uh, around. And uh, then I started talking to them. But it is extremely important what I have realized over the years is to have that community or at least peer of four or five people who are trying to uh, you know achieve a uh, very objective goal. Okay. Mm, okay. So LinkedIn is a great platform for that. Uh, I have made really, really good friends out of LinkedIn. Uh, not just professionally but personally as well and uh, yeah twitter is also an amazing platform now so you have to like i, I handpicked a number of them and uh, did a lot of efforts uh, to build a good network out of them abhi aapne na bahut interesting baat boli ek objective goal to hmm. for someone learning machine learning unka goal kya hona chahiye hmm great so there are a lot of things uh, within ml uh, it's it's a vast vast space uh, that's mm-hmm. why i actually said that try to explore ml uh, from a i would say overview uh, in a kind of overview that what all things are there and what is it that interests you that you can only find uh, by doing that stuff yourself or also by talking to a number of people so first find that for yourself so for me i really loved computer vision okay i was very intrigued by uh, uh, images and how uh, they are working how we are manipulating them so i actually spent a lot of time uh, going through them Uh, and projects related to that, people who are working in computer vision. And so I had a very clear objective in my mind that even within machine learning, this is a one specific area in which I want to be an expert at. So I spent my time uh, accordingly. I would go through tutorials, go through courses, go through books and spend time almost around it. So it is very important to find that niche that you are there. And now it has become Mm -hmm. like uh, multimodality has come. So you have to uh, be at par with other fields like uh, national language processing and all. But mm. it is very important to start with that one niche. Like you shouldn't be like, okay, I will do it all at once. Start with one thing, get good at that, then expand your domain. So what is the best way ki someone can explore these niches? I standpoint we have come of machine learning. Now mm. mm. I want to branch out into generative AI, computer vision, NLP. So mm. mm. what can be the best one pro- like strategy to explore do, all do these a, niches? Do a couple of projects. Mm. Uh, uh, now so it's it's very easy to find uh, for, get free gpu credits uh, kaggle provides you a good enough gpu credits uh, on a weekly mm-hmm. basis uh, for your account and you can also try out google collab uh, and services like Java's Labs ai as well so try out a couple of projects in nlp try out a couple of projects in computer vision and see what is it that you are more interested in okay mm-hmm. because you are going to spend a number of hours in that are you ready to spend like 10 hours in a day studying this or mm-hmm. working on this if the answer is yes then go for it if not then keep such so when i was competing so i was i when i was competing so i used to take part in like different types of hackathons so not just like computer vision nlp but tabular hackathons as well so which had tabular mm-hmm. data so that gave me a good idea okay this is like interesting me more and this is not so much mm. right Achha, software and hardware ka ek combination bana ke hume seekhna chahiye machine learning ko I would say it uh, totally depends on your interest. Like currently, mm-hmm. the kind of work I have been doing in the last, like full time in the last uh, two years or so, uh, 
uh, i did not really need a lot of hardware knowledge uh, in terms mm-hmm. of uh, cuda languages and programming yes i did study some of, some bit of that uh, at some right. point because when i worked at and in, uh, in, i had internet and media back in my college so that is something which you should be aware of like uh, in terms of gpus so how gpus are actually functioning so what are these cores actually doing how are you parallelizing things between them these are big, these become very important also how the os is actually working um and how the memory is being distributed and all so these are very important to like after a particular stage when you are starting optimizing for things right because these modules mm-hmm. can very quickly okay. take a lot of time uh, for training okay that is where the knowledge of these hardwares and how do they work and operate on a very very fundamental level will help you reduce right. down the time and total cost but when it comes to building hardware projects i think uh, i would say it's completely based on your interest and what are your goals yeah. uh, that you are if you okay. feel like it definitely give it an explore so what all niches have you explored personally so uh, like since i had beginning i think i had gone a lot into tabular data uh, time series mm-hmm. data and uh, computer vision and nlp that is where i had spent my most of my time uh, into mm-hmm. then okay. i started my full time job in around uh, that was in my final semester itself so in my final semester i had taken a full time job i worked 6 months remotely and then i had shifted to okay. uh, gurgaon for the same so during that time most of my work was in computer vision uh, building things from scratch there i did a lot of code because the entire end to end pipeline for projects uh, was uh, like being developed right so there everything was uh, very relevant to computer vision for a brief period of time i did game development as well uh, for about 2 3 months as well. mm, okay. uh, but that that was a little different the ai used in that is little different but mm. again when i joined rephrase uh, last year in jan most of my work has been in computer vision and a lot of it also involved some really good ai engineering as well so which i have obviously mm, okay so bhai according to you like what is the best uh, niche to explore mm-hmm. right now like computer vision generative ai nlp gaming personally aapke accordingly kya is the mm-hmm. better choice right now i i would again say that it's it's not um, choices are not really uh, good or bad and i would say the the mm-hmm. ones which you actually work for make it good or bad i mean there can be a field which is really really booming but uh, you are not very interested in that so you might not give mm-hmm. so much time mm-hmm. in that there is something which is relatively normal but you try to become in the top 1% or top 5% of that mm, then yeah. you do very well so i would say that don't go after these buzzwords i still consider generative ai as a buzzword which people are using mm, okay. uh, i would say fundamentally it's either computer vision or nlp or things of that sort which mm. are going down right okay. so try to get your fundamentals extremely extremely strong and figure mm. out what is it that you want to spend your time on that i have been emphasizing it like think throughout the last 15 20 minutes because yes. uh, i realize that it is extremely important that you love uh, what you are doing uh, if not what will happen is that um, you will actually get lost uh, in the space okay mm. and yeah. you will not actually find one particular thing to be really really good at so today a lot of people are actually looking uh, skill labor in terms mm. of uh, one particular thing that you have to be really really good about because normal code to chat gpt will likh lete makes sense correct yeah acha bhai alab for a machine learning engineer hmm. where are good opportunities are there good opportunities in india ya fir remote work there are more better opportunities matlab better opportunities in remote work or india matlab according to your experience so far in terms of engineering there is a lot of work in india a lot of startups are hmm. uh, going really okay. good work but when it comes to uh, research and development there is very very few opportunities like i when i was going to switch my my first company uh, rephrase was the only company which i had applied uh, that right. the interview went on for i think 2 to 3 months i had not applied anywhere i decided that if this happens i will join this company or i might just take up a remote job or move out of india so that is what uh, i had thought because i wanted something which was at an intersection of research and engineering right so that that is extremely hard to find and the only way to actually find is uh, whether people are just put, pulling in open source models and just tweaking them a little and building at products or actually developing things from scratch is to talk to their team so i had actually spent some time uh, researching about the team that was working there the kind of projects that they are built and i also spoke to some team members on the kind of projects that they do like whether mm-hmm. they just okay. like pick up because a lot of companies have these kind of uh, uh, they call themselves as engineers or researchers but what actually they mm-hmm. do is pick up a bunch of uh, repos tweak them a little huh. and push them out in the products 
so that yeah, i had okay. already done like uh, in my uh, first job so i, I had become good at uh, creating the entire pipelines and coding things from scratch what i wanted mm-hmm. my objective for the next year was to start learning how to build algorithms from scratch hmm. so i think uh, if your objective is like get becoming good engineer sort of thing there is a lot of work in india itself but again mm-hmm. when it comes to an inter- intersection of research and development i would say like really really yeah. a few companies rather yes so now talking about projects jan bhai like what is a good project according to you aap kis pe ko bologe ki ha ye ek acha project hai like you can learn something from this and it can also actually help you get opportunities in the future okay so first of all something which is not just copy pasted from the web okay uh you can use that as a starting point uh mm. for sure but whatever i feel every interviewer sees is that have you used your brain actually anywhere in the process right. or have you just picked up things and put it out there so uh, it is very important for you to start building that habit of thinking let's say i build a computer vision model for classification okay hmm. and uh, uh, i found some model and i have used it in my project so there's like one model this input this output i am predicting hmm. something right i can just stop it there and call it a project but hmm. to package it at least so what you should do is try out a bunch of more models why this is working why this is not working okay what is it more than i can can i do not just from the model side can i do something from the data is the data good enough so put all that thought in multiple stages and that is also reflected if you are talking to someone within interviews right so these are the challenges that you faced mm-hmm. and these are the solutions that is one that is what people actually want so if i give you any project theek hai are you able to think how to improve it or not on yourself so that is extremely important so i would say that whenever i have spoken to people regarding projects or whenever people have spoken to me that is something which i have always Uh, try to see if that they have used something of their brain or not to improve the particular thing because that is what mm-hmm. they are going to be actually using and also don't just leave mm-hmm. projects uh, to a point that you have trained a model and that's all try to find a way to serve it try to find a way to host it like hugging face is now a very good uh, platform where you can host your projects and all so try right. to find an end point where people can just click a link and they can use it uh, from there right so adding to this point ishan bhai can you also like give some example like ye hi karna bahut mushkil hai like people still mm-hmm. know ki ha i have to add something from my own mm-hmm. but wo mm-hmm. kya add karna hai kaha leke jana hai kis direction mein leke jana hai wahi log struggle mm-hmm. karte hain to example mm-hmm. can you share so uh, for example i will tell you uh, so i was uh, in my first company i was working with a data set there were around 60 70000 images uh, back then right. Uh, or i think more so the problem there was that there were a number of duplicate images right so i spent a lot of time, instead of just going and uh, doing that manually or just hiring someone to clean the data for me so i actually built a very good system that could uh, you could give an input data and it would find the duplicates so duplicates need not be that the exact same image image is there twice so i built out two algorithms if the exact same image is twice it was extremely fast and if it is even not so i uh, so using there's a model called the arc face where you can generate the embeddings i found a way that that was extremely fast to generate these embeddings as well otherwise for 60 70000 images even that takes a lot of time and then a mm-hmm. very uh, good way to actually compute the distances between images and based on a particular threshold it would just clean their data so it was extremely extremely fast and i could clean like thousands of uh, images of data at a very short time theek okay. hai so like this is how like you start thinking a naive approach would have been okay let us just build a model okay and see duplicates mm-hmm. will not affect that much but a lot of things can go wrong secondly uh, i would say even when you are building uh, your models so a lot of my intuition regarding building models uh, came from my work at refresh from the last year whenever you are building models uh, so you run a model okay so you should have an expectation that this is what i am going to get as let's say you have a loss function right this is how the loss function would look like then mm-hmm. you make a change to it okay let's say to improve something let's say you are working with images you want to improve the sharpness so let's say you tweak something in the model you should have it in your mind that if i make this particular change if i change this these couple of layers this is the kind of impact that it should have on the final result mm-hmm. if there the result that you have thought of and the result which has come is not the same there is a knowledge gap okay so then it is mm-hmm. up to you to figure that out that what went wrong over there okay so it should be very important that you are able to predict before starting the training this i am saying because there might be trainings that you might be doing for like to which go on for two days three days right and if the expectation is not set uh, back then then you are uh, b- behind by two to three days right hmm. so these two three things right. if you apply uh, at least spend uh, around a month or two around them 
and then again finally you package that uh, anyhow that you want so those things when you say to someone that this is how i work with the data this is how i work right. with the models for models these were the challenges i was facing uh, facing these are the things which i thought right. uh, and i experimented on these four or five things these two things worked out i put them on the model and this is how the final output uh, was mm. improved then i finally packaged this as a product and this is the final demo so you have to like continuously think uh, on optimizing things as well and why something is working why something is not working that is extremely important hmm makes sense bhai is youtube a good place to start with learning machine learning yeah definitely, some specific definitely. platform pe a good course youtube, youtube i have i have spent i have spent a lot of time on youtube i would say uh youtube uh, mm-hmm. but when it comes to coding uh, even on youtube i could not find uh, back then a lot of good tutorials on coding the ones which were there the ones which are really really good tutorials have very very few uh, views right because they are okay. mostly for intermediate or advanced audiences right. and the case is that most of the people don't under- have the background uh, to be able to understand so mm. that is where uh, a gap comes but kaggle has been a platform which has been extremely useful for me i use that till date to learn about new methods that are coming new techniques that are coming new training regimes that are coming and it is actually said that the people who are on kaggle are like really good uh, at training models right okay. so i would just spend a lot of time going through uh, kaggle competitions uh, if you are not even interested in competing competitions at least go through the solutions that are discussed and the notebooks that are there try to implement it yourself try to again have the thought process of okay, if i implement this what is the uh, output which i should expect because mm-hmm. i feel the best way to improve your knowledge in terms of code is kaggle and the best way to improve your knowledge okay. in terms of uh, theory is books uh, i haven't come across okay. a course which has that good uh, uh theoretical understanding uh, as as compared to books hmm. and for Makes python uh, python particular you are looking there's this one udemy course uh, called as deep dive uh, with python or into python something there's, that's a four part course it's amazing okay. so if you, if you have some basics of understanding go through that course is totally worth the money hmm. and also how can someone get better at uh, competitions at kaggle like getting the ranks up optimizing their code how can someone do that so i did not compete on kaggle for a very long time okay. i would have competed in a few competitions and but i do have few friends uh, who used to compete a lot so uh, based on their experience uh, what their objective was that first of all they used to compete one competition at a time right it hmm. was not that uh, most people they are they were not competing at multiple competitions and all so they used to team up with people who were at similar ranks and they would exchange their okay. solutions so in kaggle it, kaggle it's allowed like you can team up with four five mm-hmm. people so mm-hmm. it's it's like a knowledge exchange so you come out with a couple of paper, uh, papers ideas you try to implement them and you continuously mm-hmm. keep iterating kaggle takes a lot of time okay uh, especially if you are just beginning through it uh, building the pipelines and all but once you are used to it it, it gets easy secondly on uh-huh. kaggle and any other competition uh, how you are cross validating the data is extremely important okay mm-hmm. so okay uh, on kaggle uh, if you see the leaderboard that is there okay the public leaderboard which you can see so there are two leaderboards whenever you compete in a competition there's one called as public leaderboard which is open throughout the competition there's one called the private leaderboard which is open after the competition mm, okay. okay generally uh, your whatever models you have submitted is scored um, against a test data set and only 20 10 to 20% of that data set is available on the public leaderboard okay so the rest 80% is actually there for the private leaderboard so there can be a lot of jumps in the ranks okay if if it might be that you have actually overfit on the public leaderboard you are at rank 1 but when it comes mm. to the private leaderboard you are way in hundreds okay mm. so for every competition in any com- uh, in any platform how you are cross validating the data is extremely extremely important uh there's this guy called as chris stewart on kaggle he had a very interesting uh, way of <laughs> ensembling models as well called as hill climbing so yeah mm. those things are also uh, you can uh, take up after a point so how to ensemble models uh, how to pick models but cross validation is something if you have a very very strong cross validation there is a good chance that you will end up scoring better than the ones who are actually higher than you on public leaderboards hmm okay so now quickly summing up this past 10 minutes we have discussed ki there are certain niches in machine learning once you get to a point you have to decide which niche you want to go to and for doing that what you can do is build certain projects of every niche which you can easily find on youtube or any other platform and if you want to go deeper you can basically make something of your own in those projects optimize those projects which can eventually help you get crack interviews basically right, right. and after that we discussed like how you can get better ranks at kaggle the tricks used by ishan's friends 
when they were participating mm. and now let's talk about getting opportunities with machine learning right right so ishan bhai is open source also a good way to get opportunities in machine learning it's, it's a great way man it's a, as of now i would say it's, it's one of the best ways and a lot of companies are valuing the kind of open source contributions that you are making even like sayak uh, if you just open sayak uh, paul's github mm-hmm. you would say like it's green for like 2 3 years now <laughs> okay uh, even most of my friends uh, who made it to remote jobs uh, actually this was the way so they would uh, okay. uh, actually contribute continuously to the mm-hmm. repositories uh, of those particular companies and they ended up actually get being hired by the engineers who were actually re- uh, reviewing the prs okay so if you are actually uh, looking to get hired by that way to so find out uh, open if you are looking for open source orgs so try to contribute and be very active uh, on contributing there don't spam okay hmm. uh, make meaningful contributions don't spam but uh, yeah try to know the engineers how they are working and okay. when an opportunity opens up you can feel free to reach out uh, to them they will already be recognizing you uh, if you have been making uh, good contributions but yeah hmm. so it's it's a great way uh, to get a job at this point especially if you are looking for remote jobs Hmm. and what i feel is that contributing to open source is a long process it's long game like you have to yeah. spend some time with the community interact with the community be in their group discussions weekly calls whatever happens there and then hmm. slowly you will get your chance to contribute because as a beginner i don't feel ki beginners can make meaningful contributions as you said ishan bhai beginners can make uh, actually good contributions i would say because there okay. are very many uh, uh you these uh, which put out good first issues or even good mm-hmm. second issues or you can actually start by uh, some documentation uh, issues as well so a lot of companies like especially hugging face and all have hub blocks so there are a lot of issues which come there uh, there are sprints which are uh, happening so you can follow murf mm-hmm. noen uh, from hugging face she keeps up uh, putting about sprints that are happening so you can join those sprints some of them are related to documentation as well so you can actually start from there and that that is considered a meaningful contribution but i would mm-hmm. stay uh, still recommend that don't just stay in documentation but also spend some time in okay. uh, code contributions as well start mm-hmm. with documentations because that's easy to understand there's a lot uh, if you're not very familiar with git and github it might be a little challenging but yeah after that move to code contributions and st- slowly increase the kind of contributions that you can make Hmm. and generally ishan bhai from your experience like what are those kind of contributions which can actually help you get a job humne bola ki meaningful contributions hmm. but what is actually a meaningful contribution just to tell the audience ki ha this can actually help you highlight your profile or, or your resume right right so i would say uh, first of all solving for a very good bug okay uh, which has been impacting a lot of code base so a lot of these issues that are there are revolve around bugs or mm. building a feature from scratch so i think uh, a lot of people in um, keras has a very good uh, open source community so you can try out something over there you can also actually contribute to open source by putting out tutorials so they have tutorial blogs okay. as well python has tutorial blogs uh, keras has tutorial blogs so you can actually uh, give back to the community in that way as well or you can have like a really good um, revamping or refactoring uh, prs as well so i mm. think the impact uh, is what matters but uh, it's not about one or two prs like you have to be continuously uh, in that process it's not like that you just uh, read two prs in a couple of months mm-hmm. and you're good to go it, it's a continuous right. process you have to keep right. at it exactly so now shan bhai like let's say someone in india is in their third or third year or fourth year and they have experience with ml ab unko mm-hmm. opportunities chahiye to mm-hmm. but mil nahi rahi hai because right now mm-hmm. the problem is even if you have the skills you are struggling to find opportunities in any mm. field so what right. should someone do to get their opportunity their first opportunity in their third or fourth year so i would say uh, as early as possible uh, start becoming visible on uh, either linkedin or twitter uh, mm. because it's not just about uh, you reaching out to people uh, if you are visible on these platforms people also reach out to you okay right. uh, for opportunities and you will start getting connected to people in the in those areas so start building a network uh, because mm-hmm. i spent a lot of time i moved to bangalore to improve my network and it has been like really really fruitful for me as well right start improving uh, on your network that you have and talk to more people uh, working in that field someone or the other might know where where a particular opening is if you are mm-hmm. in someone's mind let's say uh, like you spoke to me uh, like for an hour on podcast sometime when next time someone talks to you about ai or asks a question i might be the person you reach out to 
right? right so be that person uh, to as many people as possible right so that they can also pass on opportunities to you and when you keep putting out stuff what you are working on a lot of people if a job opportunity comes and they can pass it on to you or if you, even if you put it out uh, on linkedin or twitter you might uh, a lot of my friends have actually put out this they are looking for jobs on twitter and they have landed right. interviews like just via those tweets okay mm-hmm. and not i am not talking about like we really huge followers like it's like i think under 5000 i would say mm-hmm. so right. it's very important to be visible what i feel is that followers ka number matter nahi karta it's just that the not quality really. of your content like is it right. actually in depth technical content though that will help you get a job yeah yeah so, don't 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 put out content like 10 mm-hmm. ways to uh, use chat gpt better <laughs> right uh, <laughs> try to put out value uh that is there if you put right. out meaning even a small number of followers is enough so i never really uh, uh so when i was uh, trying to increase followers it wasn't really to get a huge following i had a number in my mind like i had to reach 0 right. to 10k that was solely because mm-hmm. i needed people to access my connection request <laughs> right uh so i needed that number to be there it had to yeah. be something that at least they look into my profile so mm-hmm. that was back then uh, even after that i did not i was not writing that aggressively uh, after the point because i knew that number is enough uh to network with uh, as many people mm-hmm. as possible but i always try to maintain the quality uh, if i put out anything for machine learning so i, I never mm-hmm. really spam uh, in ml like with mm-hmm. uh, these clickbait posts and all uh, <laughs> whenever i put it out even if it's once in a month so i will make mm-hmm. that it's worth people's time mm-hmm. interesting acha ishan bhai like in india are there on campus opportunities also good on campus opportunities in the field of ml i would say few uh hmm. because uh, even uh, in my college i don't think there were many good opportunities i had mostly okay. applied off campus and i've seen people applying off campus uh but i again it's just very dependent on what college you are from and hmm. uh, what are you working on hmm hmm so on campus agar hum off campus ki baat karte hain to what are the best practices to crack an off campus अपॉर्चुनिटी uh, हमने सारी बात उसी के बारे में करी है लाइक बिल्डिंग अ रेज्यूमे प्रोजेक्ट्स ओपन सोर्स बट स्टिल लाइक समिंग इट अप व्हाट आर द बेस्ट प्रैक्टिसेस टू क्रैक एन ऑफ कैंपस अपॉर्चुनिटी सो व्हाट आई वांटेड टू डू वाज आई वांटेड टू हैव अ वेरी वेल राउंडेड प्रोफाइल सो यू सी आई आल्सो कॉम्पिटेटेड इन सम कंपटीशंस आई डिड सम इंटर्न्स आई डिड सम प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड आई ट्राइड टू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स इन माय रेज्यूमे व्हिच वुड पुट मी अप इन अ बेटर पोजीशन एज कंपेयर्ड टू अदर पीपल ओके सो ट्राई दैट फॉर योर फॉर एज वेल योरसेल्फ एज वेल so it's not mm-hmm. just about creating projects if there are some competitions in any way uh, if you can actually uh, improve on your uh, resume in total that's really good right. again i would say that uh, build your network uh, as fast as possible because it can um, actually bring in opportunities to you which you cannot actually uh, just think of or uh, mm-hmm. get out there right so it's a very important I'm, i have been emphasizing on this that try to build a network which is really really solid uh right. and that also gives you a very uh, good idea of what you should be doing right because when you talk to people you also understand that what help them out and uh-huh. so what i have always tried is to be among peers uh, who are trying to again reach an a particular objective even when i was applying so we were around 8 to 10 folks in our whatsapp group uh we most of us had never met uh, we were friends from mm-hmm. linkedin and we gave interviews like uh, online so someone was giving an interview at one point they were just sharing their experience someone was giving on the right. other time they were sharing an experience so try mm-hmm. to find those people uh, in your life you need not mm-hmm. to be physically present with them but even online it's now really really easy to find that peer group mm-hmm. so if someone does not take up an opportunity let's say like i was placed then i am not taking a particular opportunity i would pass it to someone else mm-hmm. that is also something which happens right also what is a starting salary someone can expect in india okay that's a really interesting question it's uh, i would say it's uh, different for different companies uh, hmm. i'm not really sure of what mncs have been paying for startups i would say the band has closely been uh, 15 to 25 lakhs uh, as a base salary okay. and uh, yeah th- that is what i have heard in the last one or two years uh, for india but there are again exceptions that are there uh, in which you can get through right. and then there are stock components and bonuses which are different but this is roughly the range which i have come across in the last uh, one year or so and for remote work is it higher lower similar remote work most companies which i am aware of are offering between 50000 to 100000 us dollars in india hmm. okay so finally ishan just to sum everything up can you just 
just uh, tell the audience someone who is listening to us in their first year second year or in their even high school like why should they choose ml should they choose ml and uh, again just summing it up what all we had discussed so far just a short summary of what you provided if you can do that that would be great cool sure uh choose ml um, if you are interested in some part of maths if you are interested mm-hmm. in a lot of logic and if you are interested in uh, building things which are not really that uh, simple to see uh, in the front end right mm-hmm. uh in terms of how you should go about it start with some programming language i would recommend python for it get some spend a couple of hours uh, so that you can program some basic things over that uh then take up some courses on some algorithms uh, every all of this all of this is available for free and then try to try to go with some beginner level projects you can find them on youtube or just some google search then try to improve on those projects to get ideas on improving on those projects you can use kaggle uh, solutions from kaggle competitions discussion forums and so on and so forth uh once you are a little familiar with all of this start reading uh some books uh, if you're interested if you're interested in like let's say deep learning go for yan good fellows uh book it's an amazing book but spend some time with books as well if you want to actually in depth uh understand how these things are working and yeah uh once you're familiar with all of this you can start competing in hackathons if that interests you why i recommend hackathons is that it accelerates the speed at which uh, you learn about things so like I, i had competed in a hackathon for time series for just a week i had no idea about time series uh but in one week i learned a lot more than i could have probably in a month so uh give that some time as well and spend a good amount of time in building your network as well share your learning uh, openly in public on uh, linkedin on twitter don't spam about things you don't need to put out things every day but when you have something meaningful something which improved something that might help others do share about it and keep reaching out to people talking to them i know getting a job is uh tough but it's not impossible so yeah right. that, that's it from my side awesome awesome thank you so much ishan for joining this conversation taking out your time and sharing your experience and insights from the audience i loved it man thank you so much thank you so much it was great talking to you man